today we're going to create a procedural brick pattern in Unreal and in Unity. Let's go! Alright, so we're going to start out in Unity today and then just in just a few minutes we'll get over and do the same thing in Unreal. Before we start, you might be asking, why would you want to generate a procedural brick pattern like using math if you can just sample a brick texture. And there are a couple of reasons for that, so let's talk about that really quick. First of all, procedurally generated patterns don't use any texture memory. So if you're kind of low on texture memory, you can convert some of your shaders to use procedural patterns instead to reduce the amount of textures that you're using. Secondly, procedural patterns can tile infinitely without ever repeating. So if you need a lot of variety and you want to break up tiling patterns, you can generate the patterns procedurally. And third, there's a possibility that generating this brick pattern with math could be cheaper and actually be done faster on the GPU than a texture sample. Texture samples are some of the most expensive things that GPUs do. And so uh, if you can save texture samples by using math instead, on some hardware and in some situations, it can be faster to do that uh, than to uh, use a texture sample. All right, so with that, let's jump right into it. There are actually three different sections or parts of this shader. Uh, we're going to generate a UV grid. Then we're going to offset every other row of the grid. And finally, we're going to use that grid to create the bricks. So the first thing that we need to do is bring in our texture coordinates and we only need the U and the V. So I'm going to add a swizzle node to filter out uh, just the first two components of my UVs. And then in order to create my grid, I simply need to divide by the values that I want to use for my width and my height. And just so you can see what's going on, I'm going to use, I'm going to add a fraction node here at the output. Uh, so take a look at this preview here. I'm going to type a value of 0 0.2 and 0 0.1. And now you can see that I've got this tiling grid pattern of UVs. And because I'm using 0.2, I've got five bricks across. And 0.1 gives me 10 bricks down. And that's a pretty good looking brick pattern. So I've created my UV grid and the next thing that I need to do is offset every other row. So the way that I'm going to do that is take the output of my divide and I'm going to split it into the individual components of U and V. So I'm going to split them and we'll use the V component there, the second one, just as it is. But then we want to offset in the horizontal axis. So my vertical axis is going to stay the same, but we want to offset our horizontal axis. So we're going to add something to this axis here. And what it is that we're going to add is the floor of my vertical axis. But before we add it, we just need to multiply it by 0.5. And this is the amount of offset that we're going to be using. So I take my V coordinate, floor it, which means I'm rounding it down to the nearest integer value, and then multiplying that by 0 0.5. And I just plug that right into my add. And if we scoot all these nodes over and add another frac node at the end, you'll see the result, which is that we've offset uh, every other row. So uh, we can control that by, with this value here. So if we multiply by zero, we're going to get the same thing as we did before. But then you can see that each of the individual rows is getting offset uh, just a little bit. And if we get up to a value of 0.5, now we've got uh, a nice brick pattern where every other row of bricks is offset uh, just like bricks are. All right, so we've set up our grid. 
and we've offset every other row. And the last thing that we need to do to create our brick pattern is turn this grid of UV coordinates into actual bricks and mortar where I've got white bricks and black mortar. And in Unity, that's pretty easy to do because there's this node called uh, Rectangle. So here under Procedural Shapes, uh, Rectangle. And what this node does is it takes UVs as an input and then it generates a rectangle pattern um, given a width and height. So like if I give it values of like two and two, it's gonna create a really small rectangle. And if I give it bigger values, it's gonna create a bigger rectangle. So I can just take this UV grid, this grid of uh, brick UVs and plug it in here. And now you can see I've got uh, bricks in white and mortar in black. And I get a pretty good aspect ratio or relationship between bricks and mortar if I give uh, the width like a value of 888 and the height just a value of 8. So there it is, pretty simple. I've created my procedural brick pattern with just a few math nodes. And if I were to if I were to do a texture sample of this brick pattern, it would actually end up being significantly more expensive to sample a texture than just this tiny bit of math that I've done to create uh, my brick pattern here. All right, so this is like the very most basic brick pattern that we can create. And in the next couple of weeks, we're gonna be doing some more things uh, to make this shader a little bit more complicated. We're going to be breaking up the brick pattern so it's not so uniform. We're going to be creating uh, variations in the brick color and all of those kinds of things. So be sure to tune in for that. In the meantime, let's switch over to Unreal and I'll show you how to make the same procedural brick pattern there. Okay, here we are in Unreal. And the first thing that we need to do is create our UV grid. So I'm gonna create a texture coordinate node. So here are our texture coordinates. And all we need to do is divide our texture coordinates by a value that represents width and height. And just like we did in Unity, we want 0 0.2 and 0 0.1. And now we'll add a frac node here so that we can see the result. Now you can see we've created our grid of five bricks across and 10 bricks down. So we've got our grid of bricks. And the next thing that we need to do uh, is offset the rows. So in order to do this, we're going to use a component mask to filter out uh, just the red or the U coordinate and just the green or the V coordinate. And then we need to combine these back together after doing just a little bit of math in between. So we're gonna use an append node for that. And we wanna keep our V coordinate just like it is. So we're gonna wire that one directly through. Um, but for the X coordinate, we wanna add to it. So we're gonna take our, our U coordinate rather so we're going to add an add node here and for our add node we want to take our v coordinate and add a floor to it and then multiply by 0 0.5 all right perfect so every other row we're rounding down and then multiplying by 0 0.5 and then we'll add that to our U coordinate. And what this is gonna do is it offsets every other row. So I'm just gonna move the nodes over just a little bit and I'll add one more frac node here so that we can take a look at our result. And I just realized that I made a mistake here. This frac node here uh, is just so that we can visualize our grid. We actually need to not use this frac because we want our values to continue and go beyond zero, or go beyond the zero and one range. So I'm just gonna wire these through uh, and ignore this frac node here, which was just for the purposes of visualization. 
All right, now that's nice. So we're getting our um, our nice offsetting rows here uh, with our value uh, multiplying here. All right, so the last thing that we need to do, just like we did in Unity, we need to create uh, a rectangle pattern here using our input UV grid. Now, as far as I know, Unreal doesn't have a nice rectangle node like Unity does, uh, but that's okay because we can just create our own uh, by creating a material function. And I've already done that. So let's take a look at the material function that we created. I'll just do a, a search for rectangle. And there it is. So we'll open up our rectangle function here. A material function is just like a material, except it becomes a node that we can add into our material graph. Um, so we can add input nodes like this called function inputs. And that's what I've done for our UV coordinates and for our width and height value. So here on my input, you can see I've set this input to a vector two, function input vector two. And this one also I've set it to function input vector two. This one I'm, named, I'm given a name of UV, and this one I've given a name of width and height. So I take my incoming UV coordinates, multiply them by two and subtract one, and that converts my UV coordinate range from the zero to one range to negative one to one. And then I use an absolute node so instead of going from negative one, now it goes from one to zero to one again, because this absolute node here uh, is making sure that there aren't any negative values. Negative values become positive with the absolute node. Then I subtract the width and height. And here I'm doing something kind of interesting. Uh, if I were writing this in HLSL code, I would use a intrinsic function that's called f width um, but unreal doesn't have an f width node as far as i know and so what i've done is i've created the f width operation uh, with the ddx and ddy nodes so i take ddx and get the absolute value of that i take ddy and get the absolute value of that and then i add the two of them together and then i take my output of subtract here and I divide that by the F width, right? And then I do a one minus uh, to get the inverse of that. And then I take the uh, red channel and the green channel and find whichever is smallest. Uh, so basically what I'm doing here is I center my UVs, I make them absolute, which is gonna create a, kind of a square pattern and then I do this F width operation and then I invert it and then I find the smallest dimension and I saturate the result and pass it out. And then I can use this uh, to generate a rectangle in my regular shader. So let's switch back to my shader, my material here, and we'll go ahead and add our rectangle node in and you can see that it's got the outputs or the inputs that I created, UVs and width height, and then it outputs the result. So if I plug my material in here to the UV and then plug my result into my base color, let's see what we get over here. Ah, so you can see something that kind of looks like bricks. Uh, the reason that it's not quite right is because we haven't given it a width height value. So I'm just gonna hold down the two key and click and we'll get a width height. And I wanna add bricks that are 0 0.888 and 0 0.8. That will control the size. Right now my mortar sections here are way too large and my bricks are too small. So now I've got a value of 888 and 0.8 here and plug that in to width and height. And now I've got bricks that are kind of a proper dimension and aspect ratio. Okay, so let's review really quick. First of all, I created a UV grid that looks like this. And then I passed the result into this section, uh, which offsets every other row. 
and you can see that right here. And then I used that uh, UV grid with every other row offset and passed it into this material function that generates my rectangle values. And again, uh, this is what that material function looks like. It's pretty simple. Okay, like I said, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to be expanding on this procedural brick pattern here. We're gonna break up our bricks so that they're different shapes and so that there are different amounts of offsets in these rows. We're gonna add some color to our effect uh, and we're gonna do uh, a couple of other things as well. We'll see how far we get with this series. Uh, depending on how much uh, you guys like it and the kinds of questions that you ask. So if you have questions, go ahead and ask them down in the comments. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial and you come back next week as we start uh, improving on our procedural brick pattern. All right, have a great week, everybody.